Hey, greetings, everybody. How y'all doing? Welcome to Living My Best Life in Ghana. Yes. Hope y'all having a beautiful day today. Today is Wednesday. What a great day. What a lovely day to be African. Happy Africa Day to you. Happy Africa Day to me. Happy Africa Day to all of us. We are on our way. Many of us are packing, leaving very soon. Many of us have already traveled. The time is now. The big exodus has began. My family, I got people texting me and calling me every day. They done made it. New numbers. I'm excited. I'm excited for us. It is our time. We are finally getting ourselves back home to the land of our ancestors, which is what we deserve. We deserve a stress-free life. We deserve peace. We deserve freedom. We deserve each other. We love ourselves. We love our people. And we love what we're doing. Okay? We love what we're doing. We are so serious about this move. And, 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 and hey, don't let the move make you. You make the move, okay? You don't let this move make you. You make the move. I'm, I'm talking about to take control and demand of every step of the way. Your process, your progress, your transition, your packing, your tickets, your everything, your passport, your visa. Take control. Use the power that you have. It is okay. You have the uh, actual uh, hand in this. Always understand we are strong black people. We don't need nobody else. We just need each other. Okay, happy to have y'all here. Let me see who all up in here right now. Bliss B, our gold family here sipping on spinach, banana, pineapple, sea moss, almond milk, black on vegan, protein smoothie, and ready to soak up some positive energy. And we need your energy as well. Appreciate your love. Oh, we're gonna have a good, a good talk today. We're talking about. Now look, this is it's uh not only are we going home, but because of certain reasons and stuff to do with the pandemic and the test and all of these different things, a lot of us are ending up doing country hopping. Okay. And then some of us on purpose, like power and I, we planning for a nice country hop. Uh, when we get back home to the continent this time, and we are going to show every step of the way. We're excited about that to be able to bring the Africa right right here on Living My Best Life in Ghana. Okay, so it's something for us to look forward to. A lot of us going to be on the continent. A lot of us going to be anticipation, anticipating getting to the continent i'm just excited that we can be here for each other and along the along the way motivate one another to have the options that we have we got a whole continent all right felicia brown said grand rises african family much love and appreciation to you same back to you felicia madai said a quiet by family marie said hey marie y'all y'all back a quiet by family i love this african vibe and you back with the vibe is necessary. African people must rise up. Hi, family. I got caught up on the last night live. I sold my vehicle yesterday, and I was happy with the check they gave me at CarMax. I was so tired yesterday. Tomorrow, the pod will be here. Miss Grace, you doing it big over there. I'm so proud of you, Miss Grace. For your information, for anyone who uses vegan protein powder, green regimen, elite protein, it's black owned, owned, organic brand, and I'm using good stuff. Go on, Bliss B. That's awesome. Jumbo, Jumbo, African family, Limblig family, Sherry. Hey, Sherry, how you doing? Much love to you. Glad to have you back. I know you've been going through some little some, some, something, but we glad that you are here and you are in Tanzania. Yes. Morning, El Limblick family. Did you smash that like button coming in? Okay. Um, truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, harmony, balance, and divine order. 
Remember, we must practice these seven principles, uh, laws of my art, in order for us to be cool, okay? For black folks, African people to be straight, let's practice this, let's vow to be loyal to each other and loyal to these principles, these laws right away, okay? This is how we repairing ourselves, along with this therapy that we get every day. Malika said, Jumbo, my beautiful African family, hugs to the kings and queens in the chat. Thank you, Malika. Macho family. How's everybody? Keisha is in the house now. Go on now. Love, love, love your video so far. Keep them coming. Sherry. What's up, Sherry, with them videos? Rashawn in the house. Hey, sister. What's up with you? We got some ant people anticipate. I got my folks that's training their minds, getting themselves ready to get to getting ready to go to Africa. That's all good. The process is a process. I'm excited because eventually I'm going to have all my folks on the continent. All my people, we gonna be doing it big. We gonna have some family reunions. The biggest family reunions ever gonna come from Limb League. Understand what I'm saying? Get ready now. All is truly well, y'all. Y'all best said yes. Is she doing it, I ain't the bliss be. I'm telling you. All right. All righty then. I got a very very special guest today. Our brother Dwight, the mentor. Coming on for a part two episode. I got to put that in there as well. But the brother just so, so versed on the traveling thing. I'm just excited about power now doing this country hopping. Okay. Jackie C. Sell Quabba family. Hey, Jackie. Yes. Much love. Virtual hugs. Hey. Oh, y'all speaking to one another. This is what I'm talking about. This is what this is real family. Oh, Marcus Coleman checking in. Hey, bro, bro. What's up with you? Can you get this to granddaddy, please? Thank you, now. Thank you. Hey, bro, bro. Much love to you. Hey, good to see you all chiming in. I see you now. Yes, all my people just. All our new subbies, our new people that have never chimed in on the uh live before it's coming in. Everybody, it's a <clears throat> it's a great, great, great process for us uh to be getting used to changing the way that we think, coming out of the mindset that we got to, you know, we got to be afraid of one another. We're not doing that. We we as African people, we are communal people, we know our powers. We getting back to black, baby. Good morning, African kings and queens. Say 31, 31 is in the house. Greetings. Yes, come on in. Hey, Tondra. What's up, LaTondra Claiborne? Hey, my love. Sending much love and positivity and comforting and loving and strengthening energies your way. I'm still waiting on you to call me, though. Okay. Yes. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yes, my sister, a quad by family in the building. Bill is in the building. Yes, 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 yes. A quad by beautiful limb bleak family. We're going to bring our brother on in about four minutes. Live, live now, live free. A quad by beautiful limb bleak family. Much love to you. I love that statement. We got to live now and live free. We got to stop existing, stop struggling, stop striving. We got to stop existing over here in Babylon. It's time for us to kill this European concept of what we think that we supposed to be doing and go live life in Africa. Okay, let's go live some life for a change in the motherland as a whole, okay? African people are diasporans from all over the world are migrating back home to the motherland. This big mass exodus is going on and I'm just so happy. Yes. Grand Rising, Day Diller is in the house. What's up, Day Diller? Bro, bro, in the house. I see your profile. Got your big, my brave mug on, baby. What? Handle your business. I love it. Yes, I'm so happy that I finally caught a live. Hey, cousin, I'm feeling a little better. I think this live is going to help me all the way together. No problem. We miss you. 
Yes. Now we got to get Shay up in here. So y'all, if y'all get a chance, go to the off uh, line support group. Let everybody know we live. Okay. Cause sometimes our family don't be getting our alerts. All right. Yes, everybody's speaking to one another like black folks do. A quiet bye to my beautiful family and queen future, Sanavia. Greetings. How you doing? Much love to you. Yes, Shonda is in the house. A quiet bye family. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A quiet bye, a quiet bye, a quiet bye. Yes. Hello, everyone. The continent is where your creativity could be achieved without racism. You just better come on in here and tell the truth, David Kelechi. Yes, that's where it's going to have to be. Thank you for watching. I need to go back and get some Detail. Hey, now the whole, ho. y'all read about that Detail now. I suggest get get used to using your essential oil stay away that detail is nice some serious all right Coraline Coraline kids repat coral and kids repats hey coral and kids repats much love to you high future love your channel we leave in a few weeks from houston texas to ghana we still looking for a legit shipping company i got you email me if you download the soft talk uh messenger app and um and 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 you register you send me your number i will uh add you to the group and i will send you as much shipping information that has flowed through these through our channel and it's a lot so get ready all right i got you yes much love to you and the children Aquaba, Aquaba, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Let's build together, okay? Yes, let's keep it moving, family. Greetings to all. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Greetings to all. MWH Boutique is in the house. Hey, hey, greetings. Bliss B said, P, P Panthers offered me a second job that would take me over the top. Then offer was rescinded due to policy, even though white counterpart was doing the same. No matter, still going home. What? Gone, Bliss B. Go out with a bang, too. Y'all, when y'all can kick that mule on your way out, kick it. Okay. Annette Lewis said, Grand Ascension, my beautiful African kings and queens. These folks got to feel resistance in all facets. Okay. Jackie C said, Hey, Jaja, so cute. Jaja better back, baby, baby. He better get to his work, his work this morning. Thank you, Miss Grace. Um, and Jackie C. Greetings, Lim Big family. Angela Davis is in the house. Hey, Angela, much love to you. Yes, come on in here, family. Mm-hmm. Yes, much love, much love. Yo, Lee. Lim Bleed family, one love. Hey, future those earrings. Thank you, love. Hey, thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. I told y'all African traditions. My sister, she does do ver virtual shopping. She is awesome. She got that thing on lock. You hear me? Frank said, greetings, family. I was watching Lansker channel in Ghana. It is so nice there. Yes, that's awesome. That's right. He's Lance Scurvy. He's finally made it to the motherland. Yes. Now, Kwaba family, Justine is in the house. Hey, Justine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The guy who helped me to sell my vehicle, I told him about going to Africa. He's Jamaican. He agreed with me, too, about Africa. Hey, yes, we having the, the conversations every day, everywhere. Africa is on our people's mind and it gives our people a sense of excitement when they find out exactly what's it, what it's all about. People just don't know the details. Now all of us will be able to touch so many people with the details. The details is what's missing. All right. The guy who helped me to sell my vehicle. Uh-huh. That's awesome, Miss Grace. That is so awesome. Yo, good morning, Limblig family. I see you. Hey, Sassandra. Hey, how are you? We see you. All right. Yes, Sawabona. Sawabona. Yes, we see you. 
Saul Bona. This pal told me to say it like this, Sasandra. Yes, much love. We've been bred, bred, fed, and led to just survive, but we Africans meant to thrive. That's right, Blissby. Come on with the rhymes. Yes. Macho Lim Blig family, everyone here is truly essential in changing the mindset of one another toward a progressive group of people that travel again. Thank you, family. Blind got his wife in their life. Of course, Madase for that love, Kui Kui and Corey. I can listen to the wife speak all day. I'm glad I'm here. Okay. My brother be on it, don't he? He just be making us feel like, okay, now nah, just step on out there and just get out there and just, just go. Bye. Okay. He just be on it, don't he? One minute to uh, Dwight. All right. Much love, much love, much love. Come on in here, family. Everybody's speaking to one another. Hey, Jazera Musa. What's up, family? Hey. Hey, Jazira. Someone I spoke to today said they are cutting her off social security disability. She said it's for the dying now. She is in Houston, Texas. Babylon has fallen, y'all. Plus, there will be more craziness. I'm telling y'all, that's why we got to get on to the house and get set up with each other. We ain't going to be worried about Babylon's system at home. As Jones said, good day, fam. I pushed the like button coming up in here. Thank you, S. Jones. Everybody that has not Go ahead and push it. Okay, no detail. Let me stick with my peppermint, eucalyptus, lemongrass, essential oils. Yes. Okay, centronella, tea tree. Yes, stick with that. All right, Sherry. And yo, Liz, saying some Miss Miss Grace and all y'all. Let's get these likes up, family. Come on, let's get them up. All right. Did y'all see the great news Latonja posted in Softball, Soft Talk? Her son is improving, y'all. Yes, Bliss B. We are happy that uh, Patrick is coming through. And we can't wait to get him back whole again. He is a strong young man. Yes, he is. Auntie Wendy is here. Great rises, beautiful niece and family. One Africa. Yes, great risings to you. Unfortunately, I'm at work and we'll have to watch the rest later. Enjoy the live, family. No problem, Shonda. We appreciate you stopping by. We appreciate your loyalty, saying your words, the one or two, and sending us that energy, and we're sending it back to you. All right? All right, come here, Jaja. Good morning, good morning, beautiful family. Quiet body, you all. Respect to you, Queen Future. You are so no problem. Respect to you too. I appreciate you. Yes. Thank you so much. Right, and all right. Thank you, Audrey. Audrey, take it to the house. That's right, Bliss. Yes, take it to the house. Malika, attention, hey, whoever put thumbs down, get your trolling ass off our channel. Your opinion doesn't matter to us, and we hope you ain't coming to Africa. Sorry, auntie, but had to say something. Yeah, we be having one person that is just the evil troll of the internet that's probably doing it to everybody that is African. You know, these pink panthers and these uh, hater raiders. You know, they out here and we have accepted that. We are, look, no problem. We cool. But I appreciate that, uh, Malika, because uh, they do need to know and hear some resistance. All right. So no problem. A choir by family, Coral and kids say, hey, greetings. All right. All right. With no further ado, Alexis Gates said, choir by everyone. We going to say what's up to our brother from another mother. He's just uh the white, he just who he is, he do what he do, he has his his style, you know what I'm saying? He make us feel like, you know, it's good to have a bro bro like him, you know. And and uh our sisters, you know what I'm saying, just to get you some uh good male energy this morning from the king, you know, we glad. And just make sure that we stay positive and stay focused and give us some info about the things that we can be doing, you know, the best way for us to travel, the things that's going on in the airports, 
He did us one time. Oh, it just wasn't enough. But we glad to have him back. And uh, hey, let's make this thing regular. You know what I'm saying? Y'all support him. I put all his links in the description box. Go on over to his channel. Subscribe to his channel. Uh, watch his uh, Essentials uh, TV show. It's a nice show that he has going on. The series is coming. But the brother got skills. I'm proud to have him a part of Limblig. Y'all, with no further ado, let's give it up for our brother, Dwight the Mentor. Ho! <laughs> What's up with you, bro, bro? Good morning, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. How you doing this morning? I'm doing fantastic. It's always see you, see you, and see power and everybody else that's over there. Good morning, family, family. I just want to let you guys know the first thing that everybody needs to remember is get acclimated to Africa. Yeah. That is one of the most important things to recognize, recognize when you get ready to go to Africa. You cannot say, is it going to be like America? It's not. The vibe is, the, sm the smell is different. The air is different. The water is different. The people are different. The culture is different. There's a lot of different aspects on different parts of Africa, the continent as a whole. And I want people to get acclimated. You are going to see some dirt. The roads are not going to be pretty. There's rarely a bike lane. The ATM is <laughs> not going to be readily available. You might have to, uh, you know, pop a squat to use the bathroom. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. I just want I just want everybody to get it, get it and remember, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. It's one of the most important things that everybody has to recognize. Do not be afraid. Hold on, Dwight. We hear a phone ringing or something in there. Yeah, the it's loud too. You might have to put that on vibrate. This thing is ringing in here. Yeah. All Hello. right. Was that was that my phone? Yeah, we heard every bit of that ring. But but also right. most importantly, for those who haven't been before, and this is your very first time, sure, really sure that don't go thinking that thinking that you have to stay have to stay for a year. Um, that you have to that you have to stay for six months. My my biggest encourage merge my biggest motivation for anybody who's going over there for their first time is just out for two out for two to three weeks. Make a decision. Because in that time frame, I think you've pretty much your mind. For those who have been there before been there before, obviously you already know what the landscape is and you're ready to make that decision to go ahead and go forward. Just do it. But really one important but has to but has to maintain is their health. You have to maintain your health to get over there. For most folks, it's going to be a, you know, 20 hour flight, 30 hour flight, um, depending on what part of the country you're in. And you have to get up. You have to stay detox, detox. One thing I always travel with is my black walnut wormwood. Um, future, I know you could talk about that and some of your natural herbs. Get detox before you go, because, you know, we're going into the fall and the winter here. Most parts of Africa is on the tropics. So the weather's going to be 80 and 90 degrees, the sun, the humidity, the dry air, et cetera. You have to get acclimated to that because um, it's a different type of climate and, and you have to stay healthy. So remove the detox, remove all the poisons, remove all the parasites, hit a couple of these drops. What goes in must come out, get it out of you. And yes. when you're on the continent, stay hydrated and you'll be ready to go. <laughs> Everybody's making a comment about what you said about Papa Squat. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, it's true. true. It's true. I was in, I was in Senegal and you know catching a cab and, and I said, "Hey, where's where's the next you know bathroom?" And he said, "I'm so sorry, sir. Three hours. Three hours to go." And uh, you know you got to do what you got to do. You got to do yeah. what you got to do. That's why mamas and grandmamas we have to roll a tissue in our purse. <laughs> 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 we make sure that we have what we need because baby when the time come and it, it won't you can't restrain that you got to be able to release it wherever yes. and make sure you don't feel nasty after you get finished <laughs> <laughs> that's right but <laughs> also also future i want to tell everybody especially the women 
to the women out there, look in your closet. I'm sure there's some old jeans. There's an old dress that you're gonna ask looking at over and over again. You know you're not gonna wear it. It might not fit you. Some old jewelry that's just sitting around there. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna get one of these travel bins that I always travel with. Right. Okay. You get one of these travel bins. I think I got this one at Home Depot, but you can get it anywhere. It's solid. When yeah, it's going Costco's. through the baggage I just claim, bought some. They were six dollars and something at Costco's. I just bought some right. a couple of days get one ago. Of those bins. Yep, get one of those bins, tape it up, put everything old that you know that you're not going to touch again. Put it in there and be done with it. Once it's over there and you have to come back, there's no need to bring the bin back. I've seen people use these bins for to wash their baby, to sit and sell peppers, to sell clothes, et cetera. It could be multiple use over there. So the goal is when you take one of these bins over and you fill it, you're not bringing nothing back. You're leaving everything behind because what you're going to do is essentially you're going to change somebody's life with the very things that you think that are important to you and they're really not. Uh-huh. That's, that's some good little tips that we be needing to know, the stuff that we can actually use that we can turn to multi-purpose, you know what I'm saying, when you have those different little ideas because one thing you really learn when you get to Africa is everything is multi-purpose that you got with you. <laughs> For That's sure. Right, everything. Everything. Yeah. You don't want to be wasteful. You want to be a, a recycler right off the top. You see a lot of the, as all of the uh, the water bottles and stuff. You like, oh, I don't feel right just throwing this in the garbage. I need to set it aside collect all the bottles, see if I can send it to somebody. And now a lot of people are making actual products out of bottles. I've seen bottle purses. I've seen some uh, some really nice bottle purses. Okay, so I'd say that, you know, just take in mind that you will automatically become a recycler as an African because you will see how important it is for us to go green, echo, to keep, keep things clean, and to do what we can to save our environment because some pink people and them Chinese people have uh, brought so much trash into Africa and they continue with this plastic bench that they own with the bags and everything. We need to go back to paper, bamboo. We can use bamboo bags. It's a lot that we are doing to get in the uh, kind of you know, in our minds, that is something that we need to do. And I like that. I've seen a lot of recycle companies growing in Ghana alone since uh, this last time we were there. Stan. Yeah. And also, uh, this would probably never be reported, but Kenya has banned plastic. Uh, plastic bags in Kenya has been banned, I think, for almost a year. But CNN and Fox will never report that in African nation to start that movement because of, um, you know, it uh, crippling the... Um, the, uh, the, the Chinese the economy in, in, in Kenya. So, so yeah, so plastic bags, if you bring any plastic bags in Kenya, in Nairobi, um, uh, they're, they're banned. They're banned in, in the country. So be mindful of that. Um, but as you country hop, you're going to see different rules and regulations come into uh, with, uh, whether you go to Dar es Salaam, Kampala, whether you go to Dakar and so forth, you're going to see different rules and regulations. And let me just give you an example. Some things that we can do here on the street, on the streets, are forbidden in some African nations. Um, I know that, for example, T Tanzania uh, is is firmly against uh, homosexuality. Um, for those who live that lifestyle, um, you might want to reconsider uh, going to Tanzania. I've also heard that um, Eswatini as well. Uh, those that's their rules. That's their policy. Um, we have no say so in that. We have to adapt. Um, some countries they close their businesses on Sundays um, because that is a relaxed day. That's a day. But, uh, we have to res we have to respect that. We can't always have the convenience of having something you know readily available. Um, and then of course the Muslim the Muslim nations they go through their fasting periods for thirty days and so forth. Um, eat at sunset. Uh, do not eat uh, throughout the day and so forth. We have to respect that. Um, but Get acclimated to Africa. You're going to hear multiple languages. Start learning the languages. We're already starting to learn some tree and some guy and some wolof and some mandinga and Swahili and so forth. That is a, that's a stress reliever 
for those who are there who see you as a foreigner, but you're saying oh, Bawani or Akwaba or Negadef or uh, Abinia or any of those or any of those type of dialects um, languages, that makes the locals feel so good inside because they're saying, hey, you know what? They're trying, they're coming home, they're, they're speaking our language. And even if you speak to s some of the people here, whether they're speaking tree here in the United States, whether they're speaking French and so forth, try some of those basic dialects to the Ghanaian Americans, the Nigerian Americans, just say to them, hey, Bawani, and they'll say, oh, where are you from? You know my tribe. They just get yeah. very, very excited. Everybody wants a sense of belonging. And I think it's really important to, to, to adapt to that because trust me, once you get onto that continent, you're going to need that language because you're going to get hustled. If you don't know a little <laughs> bit of the language, you're going to get hustled. Just like we need to know some Spanish here, it's the same way over there. So get acclimated. And that's really, really important to do. Hey, Dwight, I like what you were saying about that, too, as far as the stores, the grocery stores. We used to go into the stores all times of night, you know what I'm saying, eating late and all that stuff. You better start acclimating yourself to and not eating at a certain hour. Y'all see us eat late. It's only because that we work all day, moving around. We don't get a chance to eat. But in Africa, it's the opposite, baby. You normally have eaten but at least by 7 or 8 o'clock for the whole night. Normally, if you are an active person, you are relaxed by 10, you know, by 10.30, your family, your whole life, your whole family is sleep. Okay, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Once you get acclimated to being uh, in Africa, after you get off Western time schedule, your body acclimates itself to Africa time. You are sleepy and you you ready to take a hot shower or a cool shower and relax and go to sleep. It's awesome. The way your body relaxes in a whole different way is just awesome, awesome, awesome. That's right. And um, also, you know, getting back to, to country hopping and, and, and really seeing the continent, you know, you go there with an open mind. You, are, you already have your visa clear, ready to go, ready to go. Don't, don't stay at a fancy hotel like a Marriott or Western or anything like that. You've seen them all here in the United States. You probably stayed at a million of them, Motel 6, Super 8. Try to go to a local compound, which they call a compound, almost like an apartment type setting, or it's like a big house broken into separate rooms. Try to put your reservation to really support the local economy there. Um, you've been to a zillion hotels. They'll treat you the same. They'll get your, you get your card key, put your deposit in and so forth. It's the same over there primarily run by the Turkish, the Lebanese, um, some of the Dutch and the French. Give your money. And the, and once again, it, it, it's Africa. The bed is me, a Serta uh, uh, or Celia, what you used to hear. Might be a little harder. I always travel with a small travel pillow. I always travel with a long sleeve shirt. You might have to put that down for padding. But you're giving the money to the local economy. And let me add to that. As you're going to the local restaurants, we, and we've talked about this, when you're getting ready to tip, say you have a card and you want to tip, you never tip on the card, number one. And two, the cash tip is never left on the table because what's going to happen is the owner or the proprietor, let's hope he's Ghanaian, Ghanaian or let's hope he's Nigerian. He might split it with amongst the waiters and waitresses. The best way to handle that is once you finish your meal, you keep the tip. And then when you find the girl, the, the, the man or the woman, you personally give them the money. Because now what's going to happen is that money is going to be directly going to, you know, the, you like here where you just give where you just give them a tip and they're going to go pay the rent. No, that little, whether it's $2, whether it's $2 $10, it's going to go back to the village. And that person is going to split it amongst getting a bag of rice, getting mangoes, getting fruit, et cetera, et cetera. So never leave your tip on the table, always personally give it to the person and say maybe that way can't get away, can't get away. You find a way to catch up with them later on as you're about the city, about the city and say, hey, I want to give this to you for taking care of me. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. I make sure that I hand my uh, waitresses or waiters, uh, they tip right in hand, uh, I'll roll it up and hand it to them, you know what I'm saying? And the, the weight of it, they can tell how much, how many CDs that, that it is. Right. And a lot of times, 
we tip big because we used to this western society so our our normal small tip is really bigger when it comes to tipping on the continent so it's like we we can really change this thing around so very quickly if we are accustomed and acclimated to the culture along with our loving african-centered minds to make our family members feel loved and, and appreciated because um, customer service at Ghana, once you have trained real well, because our people are so reserved, so humble, a lot of times, you know, they just smile and don't, don't really talk. And you have to, you know, ask questions to get them to feel comfortable. But once you have them comfortable, they looking for you every time. They are always looking for you to walk in the door. They want, they come and hug you. You know, it's like you got a family member for life because it's like you were able to bring that, you know, that privacy, that uh, security blanket. You able to break through that. And that's beautiful about us as a people. Yeah. And, um, you know, you talked about you will have lifelong friends. You really will. You'll see people that will just, you know, if you're a woman, the, the, the women over there, you will see you as being a Westerner and they're going to tell you, oh, you're so beautiful. I love your hair. I love your outfit. I love your skin. And they're going to want whatever you want. But don't think of it as anything more than that. They're just being generally affectionate. And I know it's probably something that you're not used to here in America. She looking at she looking at me. Why is he looking at me? Want to take some want to take something from me? Bring that guard down. You're not going to have. Yes. Yeah. Bring that guard all the way. Somebody gives you somebody gives you a compliment out there. It is really genuine from the heart. And you have absolutely nothing to worry about. They're not going to follow you back to your compound or your hotel. <laughs> They're not going to rob you. They're not going to chase you down. No, it's not like that. Forget what you heard. It's not like that at all. At I all. think we should talk about that a little bit more about the staring <laughs> thing. And power is here right on time because. <laughs> I can remember oh, it took him a while to get used to that. <laughs> so used right. to the start, the staring, the stare down. I'm talking about Ghanaians. <laughs> I have your brothers and sisters, they be looking at you. How be how used to be like. Man, look, yeah, where I come from, I grew up. What's up, y'all? I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, in Los Angeles, California, where staring will you get do. you killed. Right, either going or coming. <laughs> so either one thing, I'm not gonna be doing too much staring. So I figure if you're staring at me, it's something going on. So I really had to work on it, and I I, I remember specifically working on it when I got to go and end up. Yep. When I heard that, I'm like, hold on, what you you sucking at my wife? What you doing? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and that's you know, they try to get your attention and say what's up you know like now i hear that i don't even think about it twice now right that's right, part right. of the acclimation that you had to get Boy. and look i want to talk talk about this keisha put up here that's that's why their society is so much healthier no that's eating right, anytime right. you want and all the damn time <laughs> no obesity that's epidemic right. here and that is absolutely true because when we got to Ghana, when we first got to Ghana, we saw so many fine people, just fine as yeah. wine, just everybody yeah. fine, just, yeah. just. I was telling my friends, <laughs> even the fat women was fine. And that wasn't yeah. really fat. They was just <laughs> shapely. Tall, big, healthy, yeah. big old man look. <laughs> just shapely. <laughs> and the thing about it was, Look, Memphis, Tennessee has been deemed the, the fattest, the obese city of the United States of America. And when I tell you this is so true, this is true. I have seen our people because we work in, in, in this, you know, it, where we help people with their, their health. So we have seen how our people have went from regular size to full size super to size. super size. And it is very, this obesity is definitely an epidemic, pandemic, all of that going on right now, especially here. And it's like it's nonstop. It's like you can't get anybody to stop. Once they get out to a certain point, it's really uh, hard, yeah. you know, to get, to break through. And, and these the parasites. Remove, remove the parasites. The parasites. 
Now, I'm telling you, but we have really got to understand that eating healthy, being healthy, living healthy in Africa need to be our number one and thinking healthy too. Need to be our number one priority when it comes so that we will be able to move about, get things done, and live a long, healthy life in Africa. That's right. Um, you know, like I, like I said, getting there is already a challenge in itself. But once you're there and once you're acclimated to the food, think about all the food, all the foods here that that are that are out of reach. That's why we eat them. The berries, the, mm -hmm. the papaya, papayas, the cassava, the avocado. Those very what do they call them? So they call them superfood. I think they call them superfoods here. But mm -hmm. over there, you can get them on regular. No you yes. vitamin C, D, vitamin K, B, etc. And it's just going through your body and your body's going to start just going through amazing changes. You're going to probably start seeing initial acne. Then all of a sudden it's going to go away. Then you're going to start seeing your skin's going to get shiny. Your hair's going to grow. I yep. mean, you're going to walk to, you're going to walk two or three miles. You're going to say, I never walked this far in America. You no, know, you're walking, you're walking three, <laughs> four, five, ten miles. Six, seven and miles. Real, yep. Right after you, you eat. The same right thing, right you know, after you eat. You don't lay down. No. No. <laughs> Let me tell you about my fingernails. They get so long and strong when I'm in, in Ghana. I mean, I'm, I have the longest nails. I'd be like, baby, look at my nails. Look at my, look at my nails. <laughs> and I don't, I, I don't wear any artificial anything. So, But being here, I work to, to the bone, and I still take care of myself. But my nails, they do not grow in America. Soon as I get to Ghana, soon as I be there for like a month or so, I see phenomenal nail growth I j and strength, mm -hmm. strong. I'm talking about just great. So it, it's really now, working. Let me tell you one thing too, uh, Dwight, that I have noticed about being in the climate when I get to, uh, to Ghana or Africa, period, is that flexibility, my mobility mm -hmm. increases uh, extreme. Like I'm already very flexible. But when I get to Ghana, it's like like I loosen all the way up. Because, you know, I'm a martial artist, so I'm doing stretches and splits and the whole. And I can really do my splits in full blast all the way around when I get to Ghana. I mean, it's crazy. As soon as I get back to the tights to the States, it's like I tighten up just a little bit more. Yep. Stress. That's right. That's right. Your, 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 your mindset, as soon as you clear customs here. You know the the go the the stop the no the yes the screaming the yelling yeah. it is really a really stressful that we live that we live in and that's why I have to do I have to do our damnedest to try to start the preparation to get over there whether you're going to go over there permanently or you're going to go over there six months out of the year start the preparation because it's really going to save your life if you think about it, it's really going to save your life some people go up to the mountains some people go out to the park. But while you're in Africa, the short time that you're there, you're going to see so much weight coming off your shoulders. Yeah. You're going to see so much weight coming off your shoulders. You're going to forget about everything that you thought you needed to think about over here. You're going to forget all about it. But one thing I did want to add is while you're there, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a, a story in, a, in a, a Banjul. Um, as I'm staying in the compound, I was talking to um, uh Biter, biter about you know who fixes the roads, who maintains, and he was telling me, oh, that's Sharif Sanko. He's like the area council, or he's like the mayor. He's the mayor of the community of a community called Brickama, which is you know it's in it's in it's in Banjo, a community in um in, in in the capital area. And I said, well, how can I meet him? He said, well, you can just go down to his office. So that's what I did. I went into it. I went into his office. He said, pull up a chair. He had two guys with guns and this and that, and this and that. He said, how can I help you, Dwight? And I said, I just want to know a little bit about your city and what are the needs and what are the wants that you need from the Western world to know about. So I want to let everybody know that's from the States in the diaspora. It's not like here where you have to make an appointment and get rejected based upon what you're saying. You can go talk to any local elected official, it's walk real, and knock on their door. And now you have a better insight of what's going on in, in the community, whether you're going to Tamale, whether you're going to Kamasi, whether it be, wherever you're, whenever you're, wherever you're going, you can meet with the chief or like a city council member here and say, hey, what's going on? What are the needs right now? Is it medical? Yes. Is it books? Is it, is it roads? Is it uh, 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 internet? What, what are the needs? And then you can translate information to the Western world and say, hey, guys, this community needs this. 
that community needs that. So I just want to let everybody know it's very easy to go talk to an elected official. I'm actually when I get to Freetown, uh, God willing, with the contact that I have, I'm going to meet, meet with the uh, female mayor uh, in Freetown, Sierra Leone. I'm looking forward to that. And just to kind of pick her brain about, you know, um, what do I need to tell people that are on the other side of, uh, of the, uh, the ocean? So That's awesome, bro. That is really awesome. This is like... You know, this is the information that we need. Uh, our people need that the uh, family, as uh, Dwight said, and we need to reiterate that it's very easy for you to contact or visit or have a meeting with anybody in any area that you plan to live in, that you plan to put your business in, whatever needs that is needed in that certain area. Uh, you can talk to the chiefs of the area. You can talk to that elected official in the area. You can become great friends with them. They will want to, you're going to want to uh, get ready because they're going to be wanting to meet, 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 meet. That's one thing about Africa that I There's love. Some There's some meetings going down. I want to <laughs> See, right. I want to sit with you. Meetings, meetings, meetings after meetings. But the work can be done. All we have to do is take advantage of, and not be afraid to be able to get in contact who we need to get in contact with. See how we can affect that area very big, very fastly to keep out the invaders and the colonizers from uh, taking over and, and waving all that little money in, in our folks' face. And, and 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 to the ladies out there, there's large amounts of communities in eastern Tanzania that I saw, in Malawi, Malawi that I saw, in um, uh, up, up, Upper River in, in Gambia that you don't see any men. All the farms, all the markets, the schooling is all run by women. And mm. the women are doing it themselves amongst their village. They're trading, they're bartering, they're doing everything they can because there's no men around because most of the men are trying to go to the city to find mm -hmm. work just to mm -hmm. bring back what they can. And it's, and it's and it's a challenge because it's not like here. Once again, it's very competitive. So I'm, I'm reaching out to the women out there uh, that are in this group to really try to find the village um, of choice. Get out, talk to the women. We love to see, love to see. They're gonna hug you and love on you and kiss on you and kiss on you and talk about how beautiful you are and this and that and really help them more than any of us because they don't have the tools and the means like some of the men do. They have to do it and they have their family, their family and their, and their, and their elders and so forth. So I'm really seeking out to the ladies out there, try to get out to some of the villages, find out where the villages is, a majority of um, a female base or, 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 or a lot of women and really go out there and let what you, what you can offer them, whether it's, you know, uh, education, medical, etc. Um, another thing I want to tell everybody that's going over there: um, take take a small first aid kit. Take a small right. first aid kit. I always I always get one at CVS. It's no big deal. Five dollars. It's got the band aids. It's got the swabs and so forth. I always take that over there as well. I give it away. I give away seeds, first aid kits, flashlights, wipes, and toilet paper. Those are basically, I know, and a lot of people are probably sitting here laughing, saying, oh, you know, that's no big deal. But to them, it's a huge, huge deal. So think about that as you continue to go over there. First aid kit in a community of maybe a thousand, a little Band-Aid, a little alcohol swab can really save them from a malaria, uh, some Tylenol, some aspirin, could really get them from driving, from driving two and three hours on a dirt road just to get to the city to save a life. Oh yes, that's, that's awesome, awesome information. And let me tell y'all something. I, actually, that's uh, that's a good point you made, Dwight. Because when we went there to initially start filming the movie, was it last year? Last yeah. last year, June of last year, July of last year. Our cameraman, our DP, the first day he got to Ghana, he was getting in the uh in the shower. You know how the showers in, in Africa are made from that marble, and a lot of us are used to just tile or porcelain. So we're not used to walking and maneuvering on that on that uh that marble. And he slipped in the shower and cut his arm about this long across mm. and maybe probably about a couple centimeters deep on his first day there. Mm. And so what I ended up having to do, I had a few things with me because, like I said, I do everything. I always had me some nice little first aid situation in my bag. But I went down to the uh, to local farms and got some wraps, and I had to stitch him up basically and close him up with the little you know little cloth clasp to keep your meat closed. But that's you never had you never my son the first time he went cut his toe open. So those things are very much needed, and you especially if it's your first time 
because you don't yes. know where the pharmacies are. You don't know what the pharmacy looks like. It's just it's a different environment if you don't have people with you. But like that's what we're doing this platform for. So you can be kind of versed a little bit. But you're right on that uh, first aid situation, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah absolutely. It's, it's, you know, a hospital. Uh, there's not many. Um, you know, obviously Ghana is more progressive, Nigeria, Nigeria, um, Senegal is more progressive, but hospitals are far and wide in between. And, and like I said, a small first aid kit can really help somebody out in a, in a rural community. Right. But let's talk about that food, though, in that rural community. Let's talk about that food preparation that might take two or three hours. And you're going to say to yourself, man, it's taking a long time. Mm -hmm. Boy, once it comes to you, Boy. trays and Trays and trays and be trays. So much food. You be <laughs> like, you're not gonna be able to finish one meal. Is this for me alone? <laughs> yeah. And that's funny that you said that because when we at the restaurant or whatever, I don't eat a whole lot. So uh, we, I, it might be just a, a stranger, another guy man's just stopping my table. And be, oh, are you finished? Are, are you done? Are you done? <laughs> I'd be like, I cannot put nothing else in my body. It's just you have not finished your food. Why? Why? Oh, oh. oh, you must take it with you and eat it later. I will, cause you sometimes you can eat on that plate all day. Sometimes. Okay, yes, most of the time. I'm about to say what? <laughs> most of the time you can eat on that plate all day. You ain't got to cook at home. You can take it out. Uh, out of the takeaway, that's what they call. We was in there, Dwight, in talking about. I need. Can you fix it to go? Can you put it in to go? And they were like, uh, 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 uh. "It's called takeaway." <laughs> then we found out it's called takeaway. And I was like, "Oh, bam, okay." Yeah, so y'all make note of that if you go on the gun. It's called a takeaway. Can I have a takeaway, Mipacho? Why? So you get the takeaway, you take it home, you make sure you got some nice pans because you're going to have enough food if power had food, I had food, uh, the children had food. It's going to be so much food, it's going to be like you already Hold cooked at home. So you just take it and you put it in the oven, warm it up, sprinkle a little water on it, warm it up. It tastes just like you made it just then. So good. The food is just immaculate. It, it's it's amazing because there's so many nutrients and protein in it. And, you know, here they, they build the food to, you know, really try to kill you and to poison you. Yeah. But over there, the small portions of lentils and greens and so forth, you know, you might think it's small initially, but by the time you consume it, you are so full because it's Man. filled with so much stuff from the earth that um, your, your body it can't ju just can't absorb it because it's so, so high in protein, so high in, in um, you know, minimal fat, but, but you know. I want to warn everybody about that preparation. Yes, they're starting to be get some supermarkets out there. Yes, you're starting to see, you know, some fast food and so forth, unfortunately. Um, but try to eat locally as much as you can because um, it's really the best kind of food to eat. You might see yeah. an occasional KFC. You might see an occasional, um, I don't believe McDonald's is over there. I think McDonald's is only in South Africa and I think uh, Cairo, Cairo, Egypt. Um, yeah, but Burger King is there, though. Okay, Birkin, yeah, but don't, you know, you, you're going to the continent. No need to no. eat what you can get here. There's no need to at all. I'm not all. going to be attracted to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one thing I also did want to talk about is country hopping with some airlines. And this is really to know, to know that if you're crisscrossing the continent, the continent is big. The continent, you know, they, they downplay it on the map, but the continent yes. is very, very big. So to get from, say, one side like an Accra to get all the way to the other side like Maputo or Dar es Salaam, it's an eight, nine hour flight to get across. And um, you have maybe three or four major carriers. And I've mentioned them before. You have Ethiopian Air, mm -hmm. you have Kenyan Air, you have Air Senegal, and you have Royal Air Morocco. Those four airlines primarily control the African continent and the traffic, mm -hmm. along with some of the Dutch carriers. And, and South African Air, but South African Air is getting ready to uh, possibly go. So, so I would highly not recommend flying South African Air right now as they're going oh. through uh, restructuring. And they might actually cancel your flight just because the, the people want to go on strike. So I wouldn't recommend it. But um, try to stay local as much as you can with the local carriers. There's also one in Ghana that I'm going to try for the first time called Africa World Airlines. They have some of the smaller airline, uh, smaller planes. And, um, you know, the service looks meticulous. You know, you get a snack, you get a beverage. They have all the rules in, in uh, English. And then they have all the rules and regulations in their native language, whether it's 
Cree, French, Mandinga, Wolof, Swahili, etc. Even when I was in Air Tanzania, they had rules and regulations speaking in English, and then they would come back and speak the same thing in Swahili. Um, all the manuals are in Swahili and English as well. So you, you feel very comfortable um, flying those carriers. They fly on a regular basis, multiple flights crisscrossing the continent. Um, but some, but keep in mind the cost. Uh, the people that you'll be flying with on the continent are generally wealthy people because local local people cannot afford to fly and bounce around. You'll right. see prices between three and five hundred dollars crisscrossing the continent because locals, uh, the general general public, cannot afford to to fly. Only, you'll see primarily businessmen, business women on those type of flights crossing crossing the continent. So uh, say those airlines again one more time for me uh, when you country hopping. Uh, Royal Air Maroc, Kenyan Air, Air Tanzania, Air Senegal, and Kenyan Air. Okay, uh, Air Senegal. Okay, and, Kenya. And, 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 and you also have some smaller carriers like Eric, uh, Eric Air, which is on the uh, western. West Africa, going up and down the, the the Cape and all the way up to, to Senegal. You also you also have Air uh, Africa World Airlines, which I'll be flying from uh, Accra to Freetown. It's a two hour flight um, going up the coast. Um, they also go into uh, Lagos. I think five daily daily Lagos flights uh, from Accra. So um, as well as Togo as well. Um, oh, I, I don't know if I mentioned Ethiopian Airlines. I I apologize. Ethiopian. So that'd be the sixth one. Ethiopian okay. Airlines as well. Um, they're crisscrossing, but Ethiopian Airlines is really trying to become a more global airline, like yeah. a Qatar, like an Emirates, because of their positioning on the earth. Their 777 can go as far east as, say, New Zealand and go far west as, say, um, you know, California with their big 777s, one flight uh, without connections and so forth. So Ethiop Ethiopian Airlines is really trying to position themselves. Um, not so much a continental airline, but a global airline because of where Addis Ababa is uniquely placed on earth. Okay, that's good to hear. So, okay, let's talk about somebody like Powell and I. We go, we've been desiring to country hop for some time, and it's like, finally, that time has come for us without a shadow of a doubt that we have, because uh, our whole 13 years has been spent in Ghana. We've been to some other places, but it's just been by default. Benin, uh, we've been to uh, Morocco, uh, we've been to Togo, uh, but it was by default because our, our flights had to pass through those places in order to get us to and from uh, Ghana. So, just say for us that we're planning to country hop. What should we do? Um, how do you think we should go about that as far as seeing probably, I would say, six continents, I mean, six countries on the continent to get back to Ghana? Okay, so you're going to go from the States and country hop and eventually lead into Ghana. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Exactly. Okay, so I would start east and work your way west. So what you can do is you work your way from the east, off of the east. You start off and say a Dar es Salaam or or, Lus or Lusaka, Zambia, um, and then you travel north to either Addis Ababa, stay a couple of days there. Um, Addis Ababa is a very big city. I think it has a population of around five, four or five million. Um, it's a big me metropolis. Um, then on to Nairobi, another two-hour two flight, two-and-a-half-hour flight. Take that back. Three-hour flight, I believe, from uh, Addis Ababa to Nairobi. Then so what about the, uh, from Memphis to Tanzania? How long would it, how you, how long you think it would take us to get there? So we have to, so we have to first get to the, the eastern coast, right? So we either have to go through Atlanta, D.C., or JFK, and that's going to take us uh, either – right across if you take Ethiopian Airlines from DC um, to Addis Ababa and then go down to Dar es Salaam with Ethiopian Air. If you want to do it that route, that would probably be the easiest route to do because you can avoid cutting through Europe. If you wanted to cut through Europe, you go through obviously um, either Atlanta or um, or JFK, stop in, stop in the big hubs, the Amsterdam, the Londons, the Brussels, work your ways and your ways. Yeah. And, uh, 
<laughs> no, I don't want to cut through Europe. Okay. There's so not my desire that? at all. I want a country I, hop. I want an Africa country hop. Authentic. I understand. No in between, no middleman. As much African money, as much as I can support African airlines on the way, I want to do so. So my last uh, patronage to uh, the Europeans will be leaving America. And if I can go <laughs> I through Ethiopian Airlines to get them that yeah. money, I want to go through them to get there too. So that's what I okay. want to know, the best African way to get home and to country hop. That's what I need. Got you. Okay, so so that would probably be my pick of choice, go through Ethiopian Air. They had a nonstop out of D.C. and uh, goes right to Addis Ababa. I want to say it's around 12 hours, 11 hours, somewhere around there. You get into Addis. Very modern city. They got buildings. They got valet parking. They got coffee shops. They got pizza. They got hookah lounges. Um, spend a couple nights there hanging out in the city. And then um, either work your way south to Dar es Salaam and then come back north to Nairobi. And then continue to go west, which you can go to Kampala, Uganda. And then eventually continue on west either to start at the top, either Dakar and work your way down or go from uh, Kampala to say Banjul, um, Gambia, and then work your way south through Conakry, through uh, 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 Abidjan, uh, uh, Ivory Coast, and then work your way down to Freetown and Monrovia, uh, uh, getting into Accra. So if you want to avoid Europe altogether, I would probably do Ethiopian Airlines and gradually, gradually work your way uh, back west through some of those capitals that I just mentioned to you. Um, once okay. again, most of these capital cities are very modern. The only modern that, that's not so much not so, is probably business, probably Banjul. They don't have a lot of big buildings. All this sky before, sky before stories, five stories. But all the other cities that I mentioned have big skyscrapers, skyscrapers. If that's what you want, if you feel uncomfortable staying at a compound, they've got the big name hotels there. Of course, they have hotels there because these guys at the guys at the Marriott, these guys at the uh, Sheridan. They are seeing where the growth is in the world. We know there's a growth in Africa. Africa. The right. CNNs, the Foxes won't tell you that, but the last gold rush that we had, the newest gold rush now is in Africa. And we have to do our damnedest to get over there to get a piece of the action. Because what's going to happen is if you wait too long, you're going to be mad and you're going to start seeing Chinese and Lebanese everywhere. And you're going to say, I should have, could have. Start, start the process. I mean, you can get you an apartment. For a thousand dollars for the year, you get the key, and you can come and go as you please. Uh, I, know, <laughs> I know power. I know power talked about some places that were sixty dollars a month. Yes, yeah. the year, Pay the pay the year, or pay a little higher rate for six months. Get the your rent. Your rent is paid. They got cash power there every month. You just add turn on your power or as you need it, and country hop from there. You have no restrictions. You don't have to worry about permits. You don't have to worry about taxes. <laughs> I mean. You're already winning by being over there. Yeah, and another thing too, you made me think about if you country hopping and just say for instance, you buy an unfurnished house where you are uh, in a certain country for a year for like a thousand dollars a year, carry you a blow up bed, a air, yeah. a air mattress. We we believe in air mattresses. We've been taking them <laughs> with us from the beginning. They Ooh. always come Fair in handy. handy. Always. Life life I'm telling you, real, I mean, real. from yeah. moving, uh, we live in different areas of Ghana. Uh, we had houses that were furnished. We had houses that were unfurnished. The main thing is for you to have somewhere to lay. As as we get older, we need some nice, comfortable to lay on. Them air mattresses are lifesavers. So y'all make sure you can. They are very. They're not very heavy. They come with the pump already connected to it. Mm -hmm. Buy you a twin bed if you just, if it's just you. You know what I'm saying? Or you can buy a queen size. We got queen size. And we still take them because we have all those suitcases. You can't. You know. You you can still carry them. They just leave them in the box that they come in. They be nicely packed down, airtight. And you put them in the middle of your luggage and, and put your clothes around it. It kind of balances it balances it all the way out when you're traveling with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I forgot one other thing in addition to that um, future, future is uh, the adapter because they're on a different plug system. 
So you right. can get you one of the adapters here at Home Depot or Target or whatever. Um, 220 volts. Some places are 220 volts. So you need to take the adapter adapter as you're crisscrossing different countries. Some countries are using the um, uh, the oh, British uh, 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 system way. Some countries are using the Western. But you def but you definitely want to take an adapter because your cell phone. Um, to charge uh, USB USBs are hard, to, you know, plugins are almost impossible to find. Um, so you're gonna have to uh, uh, get one of those adapters to go along with that bed. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I see you, Audrey. I got my new world on. I got my new world. You know, the, the, the temperature is changing, so I got my long sleeves on now. Yeah, <laughs> got the long sleeve collection now. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it's that. It's getting nice like and that. cool like around that. here these days. Hey, D. White, don't worry. I got you. I'm gonna put you in some of this new world, man. No, right, no worries. No worries. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, do I have any questions? You one thing. Does have any questions? I got a question for you too. Now it's just I was trying to see uh visas. All right, safe face safe is a person is country hopping. So uh. Do we have to get safe if we go from Ghana to say uh Tanzania? And I want to go from Tanzania to Kenya. Okay, do I need to send my visa or how do I do that? A v with the visa. How's the visa situation when you country hot? Yeah, it, it it's tough, unfortunately, because you know, as being US citizens, uh they really and this is a governmental issue. The the visa is really for the government to track you in the event of somebody missing. Um, because right. we have U.S. has the resources in the event of American missing, so that's the real reason, the purpose for the visa. Um, okay. Yes, you would yes, you would have to pay a visa um, almost everywhere country country you go to. Now, what you can do is because you know Africans like to bargain, right. like to talk. Right. You pull them aside. Hey, listen, hey, listen. I need. I'm going from here to here to here. Some might make a phone call for you. And say that's my brother on the other side. You slide him a fifty. I've done it going be going between Senegal and Gambia. Mm -hmm. um, they want to charge one hundred fifty. He says, "Come back here, give me your fifty, and go about your way." And he stamps it, and you're good to go for a year, two years, seven years, etc. What I'd recommend, honestly, as your country hop, just get the five year visa. And now you have multiple times that you can continue to go, and also. As you have those five years or three years, you could start applying for residency and you could start applying, you know, like I said, I got my bank account now. I want to really start to apply for the ECOWAS. And the ECOWAS is basically right. like their local driver's license to here where we can drive in any state with our local driver's license. They right. have the ECOWAS card or residency card where when you land in the tree, the tree you'll see the ECOWAS, which is a, which is a short line. Right. And then you'll see the visa, non-visas, et cetera, and the long line. And they're going to mm -hmm. ask you a bunch of questions. Why are you going here? Who are you? All that sort of thing. It's really governmental tracking. That's what it's about. But I right. recommend getting the three to five year visa in each country you decide to go to. Then they'll give you time to get your residency card and then eventually get your ECOWAS. So and once you get your ECOWAS, you have nothing else. To, you can bounce all day without paying anything. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Uh, Miss Grace said, ask the white why he didn't like Zambia again. I didn't like Zambia because, you know, once again, the conformity of the British rule, you see, uh, we're all one. We, we understand that. However, some Africans are trained to follow principles that their ancestors taught them how to do. And it comes from colonialism when they were trying to break the continent apart. Zambians are more affluent than some of the other countries. Um, but because of their society and their support comes from England or the UK. So some of the things, how they navigate are not as traditional as you say, going to neighbor, neighboring Malawi, going to neighborhood Tanzania, where it's a more of a tradition um, amongst themselves. Zambia has a huge uh, 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 British support on all levels, the British army, et cetera. So they're a little bit more affluent, but I'm not saying that I so much hate Zambia. Um, it's, the, it's the political side. Like I said, I crossed into Zambia two or three times with a taxi driver. I said, oh, I got to get my passport. He said, no, that's my brother on the other side. The British made that. Don't worry. They won't ask you any questions. You're my brother. Um, but but that's just how that's just how they are. The same way with South Africa, the same way with Lesotho, um, the same way with Botswana and Namibia. Um, they have their former colonial rule that kind of 
gets in the brains of the people through generations, and they don't know how to break that from their traditional, uh, their, their, their traditional lifestyle. If that makes sense. Okay, right. just exactly say. They said, when you say gold rush and getting on it, can you explain how? Yeah, I, uh, I really mean that and getting that business up and run, up and running. Um, right. Whether, like I said, when you want to do some medical services, whether you want to have a delivery service, um, you know, sending kids out and doing deliveries on deliveries on, mo on motorcycles, whether you want to do a, a first veterinary veterinary clinic, whether you want to teach, that's what I mean by that in terms of the gold rush because they're gonna start those people from those countries. The Lebanese can't go back to Beirut; it's too dangerous. Right. The Turks don't want no part of Istanbul because of the politics there. So what do they do? They go to Africa because mm -hmm. it's very simple to get things up and running. There's no requirement. There's no restrictions. You go in with $10,000, $15,000, and you do what you want. You pay first to last month's rent, put your sign up, lights up, and you're good to go. That's what I mean by the gold rush is that get, getting in there and starting up a small business, even if you decide to even partner with somebody and exporting soaps to America exporting coffees to America, exporting shea butters to America. There's still ways of doing it if you partner with somebody locally. That's what I mean by a gold rush is really getting and in, in starting a business to create local revenue for the people. That's what I mean. Okay. All right. Corey B said, can you buy land if we're not citizens or is it just leasing the land until then? Uh, uh, depends on the country. Um, I know uh, Senegal, Ga uh, Gambia, um, and I also believe Liberia, it goes through uh, the chiefs. And that is more so of a lease, a long-term lease, a 100-year lease, 60-year lease, 50-year lease. Um, some countries, they let you buy land immediately as foreign citizens, um, pay, go through a proper channels. Don't just take somebody's word for it. You got to get a lawyer. You got to go downtown. Right. You got to get sworn, all that good stuff. Um, it's not like here where you just you know get your land, get the title, and everything, and everything is secured and safe. The rules don't work that way. You'll find yourself buying some land and someone will take it right underneath you. And I'm surprised everybody, everybody's seen horror stories of that, of Americans going down by not, not knowing the protocols and how all of a sudden their land is not their land anymore and so forth. Try to find mm -hmm. someone reputable and uh, future. That's one thing. There's two things that I really can't get my hands on on the continent. It's one, finding a good importer that you can trust, importer, right. importer, import goods from the states and two a real estate person with legal knowledge to show you how plots are your size is this mine and so forth those are two areas that i just don't know much about. oh okay mm -hmm. and those are those do seem to be the two most uh elusive areas that's when right, you're dealing right. in africa too because every time i don't even know of real estate agents in uh in africa period or ghana you know, I've always seen agents. When I say agent, it's not a real estate agent. It's what we well, know a real know, estate agent. Right. He's somebody like your partner. They be like, look, man, I know somebody that got a <laughs> wham. You know, so I can take you over to the holler at him. You know, give me a little sum <laughs> on the yeah, side. Give me up with some. You know, and, <laughs> you know, you, you gonna, he's just the one that hold the keys. You know right. what I'm saying? To show you the different places. Or he knows that. some uh, some more of his partners that's doing the same thing. It's like a uh, like an underground network that they That's have right. turned into a, a kind of legal way for them to make money. But it's always, you know what I'm saying, we have had some horrible experiences with agents. That's why we don't push, talk about agents. We don't push that at all. We believe in knowing somebody that knows somebody that got a house, knowing somebody that knows somebody that got, you know what I'm saying, that has properties or something like that. You going through somebody else. As far as, uh, the companies that do have houses, they are mostly already up on Gunner Web or Tonatown or something like that. But you still have to be very careful. You cannot be uh, desperate and, and, and impatient. You will get gat. You will get gat. If you are impatient and you desperate, I'm telling you, it never fails. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's why I say go there for six months or go there for a year, navigate throughout the city, get a feel of who's who, who's telling the truth and so forth. And now you can make a decision. I can recommend going over there immediately and starting to think about buying right away. I mm -hmm. recommend just understanding the landscape, 
Um, and I saw Chantel that just posted up. I did forget about uh, Wanda. Wanda, um, yes, K uh, Kigali is a, is a fantastic city. I was supposed to go there uh, three years ago uh, when I was cutting through Brussels, but that's when the Brussels uh, airport bomb went off and I was stuck in Brussels for that portion. Um, and, and that was my first, initially my first trip was to go to uh, Rwanda um, to see Kigali because, you know, I've heard so many great things about it. It has the cleanest city in Africa. They've got Wi-Fi. They've now got uh, uh, cashless um, uh, bus service, electric bicycles. Electric bicycles. Um, the, 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 the president there um, has really decided yeah. to go, go, go alone on his thinking and to really make his country a priority, considering that his country, I think, is the second smallest other than Gambia. In, in in the continental uh, portion of Africa, and he's land. He's done a, he's done amazing things. And Kigali is a fantastic city as well. Spotless, from what I've he heard. The only thing right. that uh, uh, troubles me with Kigali is the um, he has now interest in allowing Israel um, to obtain visas and residency there. And um, I can only support Israel if my Palestinians are free. So I have no desire to go to. Um, uh, 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 um, Tel Aviv or anything like that until my Palestinians, they remove that gate and the Palestinians can remove freely and take a drive down to Egypt just like the people can in Jerusalem. So that's the only thing that bothers me about Wanda is their relationship with Israel now. But I, under, but I, uh, I understand and I appreciate his progressiveness of what he's done by himself um, to really shape that country as well as increasing his exports for coffee and uh, nuts and some other things. So you know, hats mm -hmm. off to him, but that's really my only gripe about uh, Wanda. Okay. Is it true that Chinese people are taking over Zambia? Because I'm very worried about that news. It is true. I mean, you've seen the videos with Wude Maya talking about, you know, right. he just wants to uh, put uh, Zambia, uh, remove Zambia off the continent, that they're on their own. He has no desire to go back there. They've got yeah. billboards up all over town in Chinese. They've got Chinese churches not welcoming uh, people of color at all, exclusive to them, um, the factories, they're hiring just their own direct flights now from Luka, uh, Lusaka um, all the way to Beijing, um, nonstop. Uh, Angola's done the same thing, uh, nonstop uh, to, 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 to China, bypassing everything. I've heard even half crews, half flight crews on some of those African flights on African airlines are half Chinese and half African, if you can imagine that. I can't picture that. That's what I'm hearing from from friends of mine that have been there. Oh my God, this was that's horrible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Boo says Senegal and the Gamma, you can buy without being a citizen over there. Thank you, Boo Car from Ethnic Vibes. Greetings. Hey, African okay, family. Okay, Boo the day. Yes. Yes. Uh. Okay. Somebody got the black unicorn up. Yeah, we do have some diasporans that have started real estate companies in Ghana. So y'all make sure y'all look up the blackunicorn.org. Uh, we have done a, a, a collab uh, here before. Uh, and I need to bring Sister back on since uh, her company is up and running now. So we need to bring her back on too. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's see what else we got. Y'all hit that like button, family. We appreciate the why. Y'all make sure y'all go in the description box right away. Uh, follow him on IG. Follow him on both of his IG pages. And also, uh, go go over to his YouTube channel. The why you want to tell everybody how they can connect with you right, right now? Yeah, I've got my page on uh, YouTube that I'm slowly building. I appreciate it for those who have followed me so far, Dwight the Mentor, as well as my um, film location business, which is called Film Local GA or Entertainment Consultants. But you can follow it on IG, Film Local GA. Um, I primarily do uh, film locations for the uh, entertainment industry here in, in Georgia, as well as Tennessee. I'll be filming a project. I'm, I'm going into slowly getting into Tennessee, um, into Chattanooga. I'll be filming a project up there probably around November. Um, a little bus stop scene, a producer wants to, to shoot up there, uh, and parts of Eastern Alabama. Um, and my content channel, which is called uh, uh, Essentials TV Show, which primarily focuses on African-American women or women of color in general um, with unique occupations. And I mean unique occupations that you don't that you see on TV, TV such as like fitters, truck drivers, female uh, farmers and ranchers. 
um, executive producers and, and, and the like. So if anybody knows of any women uh, uh, are in those unique positions that are primarily dominated by men, I would like to set them up for it. We put them off. We put them on my content channel. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. But, you know, once again, this group is not just for me. It's really for everybody. And I just can't wait for um, Future and Power to get over to the continent to head up, up the um, the information booth or the information center. So for yes. those who have never been to Africa, you have a resource on the ground that you can trust. Yes. You can sit down and talk about, should I go north? Should I go south? Should I go east? Should I go west? Um, it's not like here where you have to say, you know, there's good, bad, and the ugly. There's really no ugly. You can go in any direction that you want to over there. However, there are resources, governmental pages that you can see what's, hap what's happening in certain countries. We know right now in Cameroon, the SPAR, the, SPAR, the English part. Yaoundé, Yaoundé, and the French speaking Douala um, are having some conflicts about the, the Muslims and, and, and Christians and Muslims, uh, French speaking, English speaking. So there's a divide right there. There's some issues with some, some, uh, uh, some, some conflict there. We also know in Brazzaville in the Congo, um, there's some war torn uh, politics going on there. And there's a possible coup in Mali, uh, in Bamako, uh, which is uh, uh, West Central Africa. There's some also some political stuff going on over there. Uh, so two Earth is having issues. Having issues. Uh, we know that there's some issues in, in North, uh, very far East Africa and Djibouti and Somalia. Um, I'm not saying by any means don't go there. I'm just saying be, ca be cautious of it and really have somebody on the ground that can kind of navigate you. Everywhere, everywhere else on within the you know 50 odd 54 countries, you're free to travel. You have nothing to worry about. I've seen plenty of young women, young white women with backpacks on in the middle of, you know, like I said, middle of Tanzania. And I'm looking at them like, where are you going? Oh, we're from the University of Kansas. We're just touring Africa by yourselves. Yeah. Why? Why not? So if they can do it, there's no reason for us to even think about uh, uh, being scared of any. That's really our, that's really our continent. So just, you know, for folks, keep that in mind. Keep an open mind and just be prepared. Just, you know, be really, really prepared because you're going to have a, t you're really going to have the time of your life. And it's really changed my life. I don't even look at going to, like you said, going to Europe is just a connection point. Right. I have no desire to stay going to South America. Um, you know, I've, I've been to several countries, South America, Ecuador, Venezuela, Venezuela. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. But knowing that you can go to a place where we're dominated, that you don't feel out of place, that your hair can really be any style, whether it's locks, mm -hmm. whether it's rows, whether it's straight, nobody, nobody really cares. Nobody's going to care about your jewelry. Nobody's going to care about your fancy watch. They really don't care. <laughs> I mean, they just, you just live your life and just be free. That's it. Really free over there. I don't know how, I mean, Powell, I know you could uh, attest to that. You're really, really, truly free over there. Yes, sir. I put on flip flops and t-shirts every day. That's right. Yeah. It, it, it only to, and then if I get fly to go to an event or something like that, I'm going to the tailor. I'm going to the African shop. If I don't find an off the rack, I go with 20, 30 gunner CDs and give me something made. And hey, it, it's, it's just like that. Just a suit, like I mean, that. imagine a suit, a suit for $40, tailored suit for $40. Uh, Man. A high end restaurant, um, for the most part, Africa's $15, a high end, a high -end restaurant. Um, I yep. fed in, in, in Banjul, I fed my driver, um, his, his, his girlfriend and the girlfriend's friend at a fancy restaurant. And I must've spent $32 with drinks, with meals. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's everybody. Right. And that's a big deal. Yeah, you know, that's a big deal. So, you know, yeah. I don't expect there's no hundred dollar meals anywhere. Unless, like I said, you go to Joburg or you go to uh, Cape town. Once again, British rule, they're going to have everything Westernized for you. Yeah. They've got all those fancy things, but, that's those numbers are out of the question. You're going to come all the way down and save a lot of money. Right. Jaton said, hey, Dwight, what do you think about Africa becoming one nation? Maybe that would stop the onslaught of foreigners in different countries. You know, I, I really wish that that could be possible. But, you know, just like here, just like African-Americans, some of us come from Southern way of thinking. Some of us come from the New York way of thinking. Right. Some of us come from a L.A. way of thinking. And we cannot, unfortunately, come to a full agreement of how things move. Southerners do things differently. Uh, Southerners have family reunions. Uh, people from New York and, and, and California, that's not customary to them. Um, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. 
But the movement, we can still have a genuine movement together. And that's what the Echo Walk, the Echo, the Echo Walk is. And that's what that new currency that the African nations are trying to do, the Echo currency, that's going to be huge. That's like the Euro. What they're trying to do is, that, uh, and, and Nigeria is really at the forefront because they're one of the wealthiest nations now. Nigeria is saying, if we do an equal currency, our currency, we can balance out uh, currency or our GDP in Nigeria, along with Ethiopia, and we could support Mali, we could support Liberia, which has a GDP of maybe $500. We could support Sierra Leone and Gambia to where their wealth will also be supported so we can all move. If you go to Europe, go to Europe, whether you go into France, Belgium, Denmark, Ireland, and so forth, that Euro, every country is kind of the same in terms of their economics. Africa's not that way, not like that way. And that's why they're trying to do this echo currency to get, to get the ones who need to be pulled up to so get them up to standard so they can have a better prospering life going forward for their for their people. So a lot of those people don't end up going to Europe. You've seen them on the boats getting, you know, going up there to try to make a better future because there hasn't been anybody to support them. And that's why we have to go over there to help them and show them a way that if we employ them, the less likelihood of them trying to get to Europe um, to have a better life for their family. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You haven't had a chance to go to Cameroon, have you, Dwight? I have not. Uh, I have many friends that are from Cameroon. They talk about how beautiful it is, the waterfalls, the mountains, um, the beaches. I have not. I have not been to Cameroon. Okay, because they say Cameroon got every every climate is that there you that you can okay. think of is there. And I'm just excited. Uh, my my our lineage came back from to Cameroon. Can't wait to be able to go there. I know they got a a, a situation with their president. That has been in office for 36 years. I mean, he he looks like he needs some rest, and <laughs> it, and it's time for uh, a new African mind uh, person to go in and change the floor of things with Cameroon because it has so much potential. And a lot of us diasporans, we uh, have a uh, lineage there. We ready there. to go there go and 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 uh, put our feet down. And build infrastructure and 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 contribute as much as we possibly can. So we hope that that changes very very soon. Yeah, I do. Yeah, one thing is that I I agree with you on that. I hope it changes, but I also hope that some of the um the African nations really look at uh, the African Americans trying to get back home will um allow an easier way for folks to get their um citizenship. And the mm -hmm. residency card. We know we know the you know the return, uh, the year of the return for Ghana has really done a lot. Um, you see the celebrities now jockeying and get them second them second passports. The Ludacris's, the Boris Cujo's, the et cetera, right. et cetera, trying to um, um, really be nice, really be nice. And and like I said, for those who uh, have been there, to get to talking to those local officials there and saying, hey, listen, do you really want us to make a difference? If you can just give us an easier opportunity to become dual citizens or waive residency fees or waive visa fees for African-Americans or people of color from the, from the Western world, people will come, will come because we look at those fees as a deterrent. But if we go there knowing that, Hey, this is another step that we can move in faster then a lot right. more people will go. So right. uh, I, once again, I highly recommend trying to find uh, your, the, the local politicians there and just sitting down talking to them and saying, Hey, listen, a lot of us want to come over here, but they don't like your $150 fee. They don't like your $400 fee and so forth. Can you guys do something about that? And maybe, the, maybe just maybe they'll listen. Oh, yeah, maybe. I hope so. Yep, that's a that's definitely a valid argument. I was seeing someone speaking to uh, the sister from Black Situation said they um, they turned it they down. They rejected the, 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 the citizenship, for, citizenship. For, for diasporans, and they said, but at least uh, what I can say it might have been rejected by uh, that government, but the government is constantly changing. Just like I remember when we were trying to get uh, citizenship in Ghana back at the Joseph Project, which a lot yeah. of people have not heard of. It it was going on years and years, years before uh, the, the 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 first citizens. Uh, Thirty six people got citizenship in Ghana. This is way back.
before that, we've been in Ghana all of this time. And no citizenship was even on the I'm on the table. platform. And then it went to the Joseph Project that uh we spoke about citizenship. Y'all check that out, the Joseph, Joseph Project. Project. And then to Fihankra. Then to Fihankra, mm -hmm. the land that was given to us by the uh, chiefs and kings in that area that was uh downward spiral by a, a case of events that we won't get into right now, but we need to analyze that as well. Fee Hunkra. And then forward, fast forward to Mahama giving us citizenship. He gave the first 36 people citizenship and then Akufo Otto came with the year return and gave us all good gave a hundred or so African people uh from the from the diaspora that citizenship now it's ongoing now has spread it all over into different countries people are able to take their African ancestry documents and get their citizenship along with knowing somebody that's able to get you your citizenship too and just being able to watch uh to the uh the progression mm -hmm. and you can see the progression because we remember when we, it wasn't any african americans that were citizens of ghana when we first started going <laughs> so now we've seen upwards of, it's probably like what 300 or so now uh -huh. that has a citizenship i'm not saying living there because there's thousands living there right thousands. I'm saying as far as the aspect of having citizenship it's only a few hundred and so we've seen that. So it's progress and it's other stuff that I've seen happening across the continent. And Dwight, I know you can attest to that too, that we never thought we'd see. We never thought we'd see people starting to kick out the Euros or the Pink Panthers up out of their countries and start to tell them that we want to govern ourselves. Even as far as it being in Barbados, the people of right. Barbados don't even want to acknowledge the queen no more, which is not their queen anyway. So, I mean, it's it's it's, it's a, happening. It's the yes. age of Aquarius. And it, most of this stuff that's old, uh, old regiments, it can't be stopped because of the age that we're in. All we got to do is, like you say, get in before somebody else rec real fully recognize the gold rush and ride our way to where we're supposed to be. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you know what, Power? It reminds me that the U.S. U.S. government here communicates with those Africans since we since we financial financially communicates with them and with them and says something to the effect, "Hey, listen, we're starting to see a lot of African Americans going to your." Do you still want to still want to port your port your rubber? Do you still want us to get your diamond with your bottom with your bottom? We need you to not you to allow the citizen the citizenship to happen. It could be a conspiracy conspiracy right. thinking. What's government? What's government side saying? You know what? We're starting a lot of a lot of African Americans their passports passing these trips to uh, to uh, their motherland. We don't we need them here to support the economy. We uh -huh. want them to become citizens old citizens old and recognize recognize the truth and dis. From the United States, it could be political. I don't know, but like, but yeah, it's nice to see nice progress. Progress. Um, we're starting. To, we're starting to the linear through the uh, through the African uh, uh, ancestry. Ancestry. If you're if you're part of the Mendi tribe, uh, which is which is you know a lot of the Caribbean nation, uh, uh, Haiti, Trinidad, Barbados, um, and so forth and so forth, as well as the Gichipi Gichipi people in the South Carolina South. Right. Direct relations to the Mendy tribe, the rice growing that they did, that they really own. You can start your process, process becoming a citizen, citizen of um, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. I think it's right around dollars, dollars. Because it becomes, it becomes negative. And then I think you, then I think you can start and see, and see for fifty dollars, fifty dollars. It's about, it's about two or this, and then you process of citizenship. Nice. So it's nice to see some of those come into play, play. But like, but like I said, it could be also see, see on the U.S. side of just. You know, keep that those that those countries the way they are. Right, right. So, uh, Dwight, do you have a uh, email address that you can give people to contact you as well? Yeah, Essentials TV show, TV show, Essential Show at Gmail. That's my best email address that you can um, contact me. Questions regarding the continent. Um, um, you 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 mentioned you mentioned earlier that you want to avoid your cost all costing. Um, if anybody has any questions re questions regarding flying. Um, and I think for those who have reached out to me, reached out to me regarding passes, passes uh, with the airline, uh, I airline, I airline that I work for, they put an embargo on buddy passes. So, so it's probably just been line and, and line your purchase ticket, purchase ticket. Keep in mind, your connections need to be two to three hours from going from if you're connect, on a connecting flight. 
So give yourself ample time. I think two hours, two hours is a line. But by the time you customs, by the by the time you get in those lines, um, right. the lines and the lines are slower. They don't have you know 20, 30 bays like we have here in the United States. I know Ghana, I know Ghana has that now, and I know the new airport in the, uh, um, outside of the car has it. Clear you customs, clear you customs quick, but majority of the African nations, customs is very, very slow. And two hours might not so get a so get a long next uh, connection time uh, as you're uh, as you're uh, as you're as you're bouncing the, the the countries because your flight flight you have to pay additional fees to reinstate then you have to stay overnight and and so forth and it's just it's not worth it so have a long time time but yeah that's probably the best way to contact me a simple Gmail show Gmail routing I, uh, I uh, there's a couple of sites that I recommend uh, uh, insanely cheap travel.com um cheapo hold and on your wife you got a little echo say that again it sounds like, sound like reverb it sounds like reverb uh cheapo air air dot com is a com is a great site also i watch google google for, for lit tickets google flights um, google flights you can just put in the country and it'll give you comparisons and then also the five airlines or the six air mention go, go on their direct sites you can get as you can get a better purchase ticket than some of the using these third party tickets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. And your uh, email again, because you were getting a, a reverb. Say your email slower. Essentials TV show at, at Gmail. Essentials TV show at gmail.com. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Is there any uh, last words you want to say as far as uh, I thought of something while you were speaking uh, was about um, TSA PreCheck. I recommend everybody get pre, pre TSA PreCheck. I also recommend now Global Entry because of the different things that's going on. You want to have a smooth transition from airport uh, from the U.S. To, to the outside of the U.S. And then when you're coming back in, those things are very helpful. It's just about money. And uh, it helps you move faster without having to take your shoes off, going through the radiator. Get naked going and through dipped the, in ketchup to get <laughs> right. the going microwave. Through the going through the microwave, <laughs> holding your hands up, exposing your whole body to the microwave. It helps with all of that. And I recommend everybody do that for if the parents do it, you don't have to worry about your children. They go automatically. The TSA pre-check is very important. The global entry is another thing that's very important. We've been using TSA pre-check for many, many years now. And uh, global entry is a new one for us, but we will be using it from now on. I'm excited about that because it helps you. Just All you have to do is go to the kiosk. Put your information in there. Put your passport in there, and you can go on. You don't have to stop at uh, cut immigration and all of that stuff. That's global entry. So y'all make sure y'all use that. But any last words, Dwight? Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, Chantel's comment regarding uh, uh, Gambia. Uh, Chantel, there's really no crime per se in Gambia. It's a minimal crime. Um, the issue that Gambia that Gambia is having is fast growth. Um, a lot of UK expats are going home. Um, the Dutch go there all the time. They're hanging out on the beach. The Germans are hanging out because it's, it's really a six hour flight for them. It's not so much the crime in Gambia. It's really the infrastructure can't keep up with the growth of the foreigners. And that's more and more, more and more power and infrastructure issues with the roads and so forth. Also, Gambia is preparing 2021. They're supposed to be having a big um, Muslim uh, retreat, which is bringing, is I think it's sponsored by Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. So it's supposed to be a big gathering. So they're under, Gambia is essentially under construction with the roads in Banjul and, and uh, Brikama and Busambala and all those areas. Um, expansion, expansion growth. But the infrastructure is really the problem in Gambia. Um, that, that's pretty much it. There's really no crime. I, I don't, I, I've, I've been through there night and day uh, there's really, it's not a crime infrastructure issue, structure issue, but that's what I wanted to just say to say to her for that. All mm -hmm. right. Well, we shall appreciate you coming on. It's appreciate, always appreciate a pleasure. For sure, Dwight. And uh, we, we would definitely be seeing you very soon. And uh, we appreciate the information is, uh, is priceless. You know what I'm saying? Y'all give a good clap for uh, 
the white, white. bruh bro is always just opening himself up and he lets it Good flow bro. and that Good information bro. is just priceless i'm telling you y'all make sure to get those crates <laughs> where, 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 your, where is your uh bank card at today uh d white you know the show is your bank card <laughs> hey don't forget this last like i like i look in that closet closet give it away don't look back that's real important just give just go in your closet and just give it away trust me you're gonna reward somebody over there that's gonna enjoy whatever you think that is useless here they will enjoy it 100%. So that's what I want to say. All right. Well, we shall appreciate you. You make sure uh, you come back anytime. We'll be glad to have you. I'm sure we need to make this a regular, regular every two weeks or something like that for you to show y'all. Make sure y'all go to Dwight's. Uh, this is his email address, if essentials TV show at gmail.com. Y'all make sure y'all make cool. get you that wormwood. And what else you got in there, Dwight? I got your shea butter, I got the wormwood, and I got your herbs. I'm good. I'm clean. That's yes, right. Clean. So no, we don't push any <laughs> vaccines. We don't push any sh chemicals. So I take your graviola now. Y'all go ahead and get that Sell stuff some. out, and make sure y'all go to his IG channel, uh, which is Essentials TV Show, and his uh, YouTube channel, Essentials TV Show. Uh, subscribe and watch his, his works. He's very good at what he do, and we are glad to have him a part of our Limb League family. We appreciate you, Dwight. Have you a great day. We love you. Much love, and Wakanda forever. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Peace, bro. God love Peace. you. God love me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't, he's gone now, baby. We ain't finished yet. Yeah, we shall appreciate everybody. We hope y'all enjoyed this information. Yes, and that uh-huh. And Dwight was just he's just priceless. I know. We appreciate him for being so open with us and giving us the information we need. Um we're glad that he's a part of our family. Y'all make sure y'all support the brother. Go on, on over there, all 132 of us. Go to his channel, support his uh, work. He's very artistic when it comes to the filming and uh, the filming industry, uh, production work, anybody, anywhere. He can really help you as far as uh, your uh, production is concerned with movie or TV. All right. He hasn't decided where he's settling. He's just uh, making good of being able to move around your ton. Yes. Much love to everybody. Um, yes. I'm going to try to get up. Blind guy. Everybody's clapping. Power. Much of strong. Yeah, that was awesome. We did have a, a troll in here, but it's all good. You can't stop what the ancestors got moving for us. You put him back under the bridge. Yes, just thanks. I love my limb league family. Yes, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Dwight. A lemma. Bye bye's in the house to everybody that came in while we talking. Try to get in here. As soon as we get started, we're going to cut to the chase more and more. We're not going to. Uh, prolong things when we need the information to get out we want to spend a lot of time on getting it out so i'm gonna be doing the shouts out to everybody at the beginning of the video so try to make sure that we're on time we stay loyal to the channel and we bring in people to get them the information that we need we're trying to bring the most uh most informative to you right now because we got a lot of us that are making moves and we need this information asap do you get the pre-check once you purchase tickets uh you got to call or uh, go online and uh look up tsa pre-check how to register you should have to go into your airport in your area to the office and register and then they'll give you your pre-check number and they'll send you your official paper in the mail saying that you have your tsa pre-check and when you get your tickets make sure it say tsa pre-check with a check by on your ticket whether it's uh on the app or not it should be on there if not then you go when you go in check in go a little early so that you can make sure that the agent is able to add your tsa pre-check number in it's good to carry in your 
pocket. It's very good information. Yes, uh, Uncle Jay. Yes, uh, Wakanda forever. Yes, uh, we are just glad that we have this type of information. <laughs> My I promise. Even been around in that area with nothing like that popping up. It seems like it's timing things with all things that comes with the flights. Yeah, timing yeah. is important. Y'all make sure you go to the airport early. Do not waste. It's better to be early than to be late. And like he said, those hours in between, you need to make sure you at least two hours in between because if you fly European airlines, they have a way of, of making one flight in one corner of the airport and you got to travel all the way to the other corner of the airport for your connecting flight, which is, uh, is, is serious and is sickening, but it's true. So you don't want to miss your flight, have to get rescheduled, sleeping in the airport, all of this stuff. Yes, yeah, some flights look really good and you think you're going to have time to get there, especially with traveling with children. You want to at least get them a four hour layover in between to stretch their legs and get excited about the next flight. Ain't that right, Jaja? Yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, uh, what I have? I have a bacterial, uh, Oh, it's called Fight Back. Fight Back. Yeah, we have a, a combination pack called Fight Back, B A C T. And it's for, uh, it has all of those herbs in it that uh, Brother Dwight was talking about. Okay. All right, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Peace and blessings, red, gold, and green. Thank you for the information, Dwight. You really know your business, bro. Yes, he do. Yeah, he do. He's good with us. He is good with us. Hit that like button, family, on your way out, please. Where we looking at us, y'all? Somebody let us know. Like the DK family rocking those crowns. Oh, baby, nice to see you. <laughs> DK in the house. Yes, we put them back under the bridge. Yeah, right. I have plenty of those toasts, plenty to give away. Thank you for the good information. Be, Be well real. and Prosper, Prosper TV, TV in like the house. That. I like that. Black Walnut and Warmwood. Yeah. Yes. Turn your taste buds off, but it's going to keep you healthy. Good jobs on the lights, family. We need five more. Go on five now. Five more. TSA likes. free check through Groupon. Much cheaper. Okay. Are you on Facebook? My Facebook, I added it. Get your free check with Global. Uh, entry, you apply first, condition approved, interview five minutes. Yep. One more like, y'all. I have my graviola sour up on deck two power. Thanks for the mentioning that my brother, mm -hmm. number four, approved. Mm -hmm. Put TSA pre-check now for, so you won't have to undress, so take you your socks off, take and all dip your jewelry off, and, 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 get one and radiate it in the microwave with your cook. arms up. Man. <laughs> They shake me down every time I go to Alpha Man. Look, anyway. We have never great. been in that machine. And now people that stand next to the machine getting counseled. So imagine if you going in there voluntarily, if you're a frequent flyer and you going in that machine holding your arms up and it just radiate your whole body. <laughs> you have to fingerprint and have a background check in order to get the pre TSA pre-check. They're going to do all of that in the office. Now I'm good, Miss Grace. All right, peace, family. No, you gotta do nothing that, uh, Miss Grace. Uh, uh. Especially Amsterdam Airport. Oh yes. man, look here. Yeah. They almost sent me to the whatever they call the jail is in Amsterdam. <laughs> <sighs> All right, y'all got them lights up. Much love to y'all. All right, me Huh. I'm going to get you over here, uh, whoever you, Lipo, before I had to do something to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get you, get you, take that. Uh, well, you mean anyway, go ahead. Uh, gotcha, <laughs> Sherry, yes. All right. Y'all go back. If y'all missed the show, the, the live today, please go back, watch the video, thumbs up, leave your comments and questions, okay? We love y'all. Y'all have a good one. Uh, oh, oh man. Man, we miss you, bro, bro. Jaja or Power, which one of y'all? Jaja? Hit it. Go, uh, you got No, nah, you got to do, do it like granddaddy, man. You got to hit it like you know something. Go, you got me back. 
Oh, man, it's Call of me, call of you, bye. All right, peace. <laughs> okay.